I'm back with another uncomfortable topic, which is spiritual elitism and spiritual manipulation. I do a lot of research on various spiritual teachers because I am a summit host and a podcast host. I have noticed this, it seems to be, maybe it's just in my world, but what I've noticed is an increase in this, I'm just going to call it spiritual hierarchy. And what I mean by that is spiritual hierarchy has been around probably since the beginning of spirituality in religion and in spiritual teaching. um, It's very common. There are people at the top and there are people at the bottom and the people at the bottom are learning from the people at the top in a nutshell. That's common in religion, but I'm really noticing now in the world of online spirituality, it's almost like there's this competition by the people, the spiritual leaders that are out there. Not everybody's engaging in it, granted, but some of them, where it's almost like a bragging effect of I'm in this council and I'm on that council. I'm in this federation. I'm the spokesperson for this highly ascended master. I'm the spokesperson for this divine being. I'm a channel of this light and, you know, on and on and on and on and on. And while there's nothing wrong with channeling, there's nothing wrong with being a member of some sort of council or federation. I am both of those things. I'm never going to lead with that and say something to the effect of, you should listen to me because I have some sort of information that is something that you don't have access to, or that makes me more connected than you, or that makes me in some sort of high up in a hierarchy. Therefore, you should listen to me because I'm the one who knows and you're not. And you can see and feel how ego-based that is. Now, obviously, that those are not the words that they're using in this spiritual hierarchy, but that is definitely the undertone, and it is certainly a manipula- manipulative way of bringing your information forward, in my opinion. And now there's a balanced way to do anything and everything. And so I'm not saying that every single person who says I'm part of the Galactic Federation of Light or something like that is manipulative or a spirit uh, acting out of spiritual elitism. However, this is a time of great discernment. And what we can look at as to the pointers of who are the spiritual teachers that are best to follow, that are right for you to follow, because there's no one spiritual leader or teacher that's going to be right for everyone to follow. But I want to talk today about the different warning signs of spiritual elitism and manipulation. And those really point out how you can discern whether a spiritual person that you're listening to, a teacher, mentor, leader that you're listening to is acting from ego or acting from their heart center. And at first that might be, it might sound like, well, that's really easy to tell, but I'll tell you what, there are some very crafty spiritual elitists out there and they are manipulating you and you might have no idea because they're really good at it. As I'm unpacking the concept of ego-based spirituality, spiritual elitism, and spiritual manipulation, I do want to presence the, the truth that, of course, people are all in different places and different, um, different places of evolution on their spiritual path and spiritual journey. There are people who kind of began, woke up awake um, from the very beginning, from their early childhood. There are people that have just woken up as adults. There are people that have been on their path for decades. There are people that are just starting out and everything in between. And so in that knowing, in that understanding, that to me is the same as humans developing from infants to elderly, a balanced, healthy person looks at an infant and says, there's 
a baby, let's nurture and support and love and care and guide this child to become a healthy, balanced adult. And then they'll have their own thoughts and their own opinions and their own path, and they will have their life and play it out in the way that's best for them so that they learn the lessons that they've come here to learn. Of course, not all parents are evolved enough to operate that way, but a healthy, balanced parent and adult will look at a child and and that will be the overall desires to have this child grow up healthy, balanced, nourished, nurtured, and able to think for themselves and be a contribution in the world in the way that's best for them. And so this is how more spiritually adept people or people that have been on their path and awake for decades could or should, I'm just going to use the word should here because I think it's true, should be looking at the people who are newly awakening or just just beginning on their path, or the people that have maybe been on their path for a while, but are looking for an expansion, looking for, for spiritual growth. There are many spiritual teachers that will lead from the space of you should follow me because I have all the answers, because I'm the only one that can guide you in this special and unique way. You are special because you're in my inner circle. That's when I hear a lot. Or you are not special if you're not in my inner circle. I hear that too. And it might not be those words. Of course, they're not using those exact words. They're using more subtle ways of, of drawing people into their circles. But do you see how those are all ego-based? Things like, I am such and such high up contactee of this very high being, and I have the highest information, and you must follow this and listen to this in order to ascend. Well, okay, that's some ego stuff there, right? There's some manipulation going on there. When people lead with, I am special because there's a balance, not every time, but quite often there's a manipulation of attempting to have to gain your, your trust and your attention and your money because they're so special that they have all of the, the highest information. And so therefore you should follow them. Certainly there are very heart-centered teachers that have very high access, that are on councils, that are channels, that are in communion with divine beings, many of them. Um, and here are the ways, you know, so, so those things might be similar, but here are the ways that you can discern whether or not this spiritual leader or teacher or mentor is leading from their heart or from their ego. And this is very important, in my opinion, to be able to discern, especially with all of these spiritual elites showing up on the scene. Who do you listen to? Well, I will tell you. And this isn't that there's the one person for every everybody. This is for you to discern from within yourself. When I listen to this person, number one, how do they make me feel? And there are some tricks in here because if somebody that you're listening to makes you feel extremely special, great on one hand, but this is the thing to watch out for. Do they make you feel uniquely special? Do they tell you you are special because you're following me or because you have my personal attention or because you're part of my inner circle and that makes you especially unique and therefore you're you're feeling good right you feel good because you're part of their inner you're special oh nice my spiritual mentor thinks i'm special that must be a good thing however what happens when you fall out of favor with that spiritual mentor what happens when that mentor asks you to do something that maybe you're uncomfortable with or maybe doesn't completely fit with your morals then what then you go into a conundrum of oh wait a minute 
If I don't do it, this might be subconscious or it might be conscious. If I don't go along with what they say, then I will lose favor and I will lose part of my special standing and they won't see me that way anymore. And therefore I won't feel as good about myself, all probably subconscious. So what's going to happen? You're going to be way more likely to be manipulated to do something that maybe you wouldn't do or to act in a way that's not for your highest good or of your highest moral compass because you're looking for favor where not within yourself but outside of yourself from a spiritual mentor or teacher that's a huge red flag watch out for the spiritual teacher who makes you feel uniquely special what you do want to look for is a spiritual teacher who makes you feel good, not because you're uniquely special or part of their inner circle, but because you are being guided to go within yourself, to find your inner answers, to trust yourself more, to love yourself more, to take care of yourself and nurture yourself more, not because that teacher is saying you're the special one, but because that teacher is saying we all have access to our inner guidance. That teacher should be guiding you within to find it, not you have to listen to me in order to find it. See the difference? And not you're special because you're part of my inner circle or because I think you're special, but you're special because you're inherently special because we're all connected and we're all, we all have access to the divine. We all have the divine spark. Every single one of us has the ability to connect and to find our inner guidance and our inner heart center and connect to love and find the greater being and expand from there. And here is a distinction between inflation and expansion. What I described in that first scenario where a mentor is telling you that you're special because you're with them or that you're special because they think that you're special, that's inflation. They're actually inflating your ego and you might feel really good and expanded and you might have spiritual downloads and like, oh, wow, this is really great because I'm, I'm feeling a difference. But what happens when that teacher goes away or when you're no longer in their favor, that inflation crashes and you no longer get that, that spiritual accolades from them. And then you will probably go into a depression or a dark night of the soul or a spiritual lostness that will have you, it will be a setback and you will recover from it, but it will definitely set you back on your path. And some people came here to have that experience. So um, let's have compassion if that's you, or if that is someone that you know, or you know someone that's in a situation where maybe it's cultish, or they have a mentor that you don't think is good for them. Some people did come here to learn that lesson, and it's a big one. And so we can't judge them for that, but we must be able to to be able to discern when this is going on so that we can make the best decisions for ourselves. And so the opposite of inflation is expansion. We want to look for, and, and you don't need a spiritual teacher for this. You can have a spiritual teacher. You don't need a spiritual teacher for this. I'm telling you that all the time. You don't need me. You don't need any spiritual teacher. If you go within, it's all there. It's all there all the time. And yes, I and other spiritual teachers can help you expand in that. And expansion is different from inflation in that true expansion means you are gaining that spiritual adeptness, your spiritual maturity, you're growing your spiritual wisdom based on your own internal work. A true authentic teacher will guide you to go within, will guide you to think for yourself, to contemplate what you're experiencing, to question them, you know, question the people that you're listening to, question the people that you're learning from, and never just take what they're saying for granted 
do your own research and do your own inner connecting to discern, is this true for me? What I'm seeing in the realm of spiritual elitism or manipulation is teachers who are saying, this is how it is. This is the truth. Do not listen to anybody else who says anything else. Well, you know what? No, that's not true. That's not right. What's right is go within, feel for yourself. Is this true for me right now? And it will shift and it will change over time. And your teachers will change and everything will change. That's a constant. The only constant is that change will happen. <laughs> so be aware of that just because it didn't work for you. Whatever someone was saying um, a year ago, well, maybe now it lands for you. Or maybe a year ago, something you were listening to was landing for you and now it doesn't. You've grown. That's natural. So there isn't anybody out there that I'm aware of, that always has the right answers all the time, and that can tell you this is how it is for you. Only you, only you know what's right for you in any given moment. So go within and do that check. Does this fit for me right now? If it doesn't, it doesn't even make that person bad or wrong. Maybe it's just not a good fit for you right now. What to watch out for is if they're saying, I'm the only one, there's nobody else you should be listening to, that's a red flag because they are manipulating you then into um, only listening to what they have to say. And they're probably not guiding you within yourself. Anyone who places themselves above you on a hierarchy is coming from ego. Anybody who says you're less than or makes you feel less than for where you are is coming from ego. An authentic teacher will have you feel expanded and have you feel connected and loved and nurtured because they're coming from their heart because they're demonstrating that they love you. You will feel like part of their inner circle because you can feel that they love you and they care about you and they care about everyone. And so it's not because you're the special chosen one. It's because they care about you and everyone else that is in their following and the people that are not in their following. And it's, a, a, a demonstration by example of loving, of being loving, of being kind, of being heart-centered. Authentic teachers love and respect their following and tell them not to put them on a pedestal. Authentic teachers that are coming from the heart do not want to be on a pedestal because eventually they're going to fall off because being on a pedestal is not authentic. It's not, it's not what we should do. I mean, you can look at other people, you can look at mentors and teachers and people in your community that you admire and say, oh, wow, these are the things about that person that I appreciate, that I'd like to emulate, that I see as beautiful, that I, that I want to have more of surface in myself. That does not mean that you should put them on a pedestal because guess what? They are human and eventually anyone that you put on a pedestal will fall. That is just the nature of reality. All of us are going through our human experience while we're here and it doesn't matter how much spiritual work we've done. It doesn't matter how how adept we are or how many followers we have or how great uh, we're doing in business or anything like that. Everyone is on a path and they're going to have hard times and they're going to have great times. It's We're all on this, this journey of highs and lows. And ultimately what we can look for is how do we find inner peace? How long does it take us to come back to center? Do you have a spiritual teacher that assists you in finding your inner guidance, your inner truth, and even, you know, letting you know that that's always within you, that you always have access, that you do not need anybody else to get there. And if you want 
to have some assistance, some help, great, but you don't need it. That's, in my opinion, the the best type of authentic teacher that you can find because they will always guide you back to yourself, back to your heart, to love, to nurturing, to kindness, to caring, to compassion, to empathy, to being a better version of yourself in the world. Authentic spiritual teachers will help you find more joy, more excitement in life, more love, more reasons for getting up in the morning, more reverence for life itself, more reverence for the earth, for other humans, for animals, for all that is. And, you know, this is how we discern. I invite you to look and review who are you listening to? And this can be online. This can be coursework that you're taking. This can be places that you're going. This can be your friendship circle or perhaps your religion. You know, who are you listening to? And to notice, just to notice, are they leading from their heart or are they leading from ego, charisma, can be from ego. You know, sometimes we'll really be drawn to someone who's charismatic, but oftentimes charisma comes from ego. Not always, but oftentimes it does. Um, So I invite you to like start that sorting process and just notice, how does it make me feel? Do I feel inflated or expanded? from what this person shares and from being around them? Do I feel like if if I wasn't around them, I would be deflated? That's a warning sign. Do I feel like I'd be just fine without them? Although I might miss them, I might want to hear from them. I don't need them. That's a good thing. You shouldn't need anybody to tell you what to do or how to think or what what's next on your spiritual path because you have that within yourself all the time because you are equally connected because that as long as you're going within yourself you have that divine spark you have the heart center you have the ability to expand and go within and connect and find the love and the joy and that expansion within yourself and when you do that the more that you do that the more beautiful it becomes and the more you trust yourself and you trust your connection and you know oh yes i am i am worthy because i am because I'm here, because I'm, I am part of this world and I have a human body and I'm experiencing my heart awakening. And these are the things that have us know we are divine, embodied, embodying the divine spark that we all are. Another thing I'd like to address in this conversation, because it's relevant and probably not comfortable for most of us, is the financial side of spirituality. So as spirituality is becoming, I literally heard it called a um, competitive niche this week. As spirituality is becoming a more competitive niche, it is a business. And so anytime it's a business, there are going to be people attempting to guide spirituality in order to make money. And that is not inherently bad, but here's the thing. Again, it's so important to be aware of who you're listening to and learning from because when money is the driving force, if, for instance, somebody has all of their income based on followers and clients from their spiritual teachings, then there it doesn't mean they're going to misuse or manipulate, but there is a door that is open for that possibility. Whereas somebody who is financially secure or stable and not dependent on their following for money is going to inherently be less likely to manipulate or or sort of do something or teach something that they don't want to or that they feel like 
is just because it's trendy or because they need the money. And, you know, this is where there's this double-edged sword with spirituality. And, and because I'm in this as both as, um, this is something I was doing long before I was ever making money, spiritual teaching or ever taking donations or ever, um, taking clients or anything like that. I was already in this realm. I was already teaching this material. And at some point I realized, okay, if I want to really devote all of my time to this, then I will have to develop courses and products and find a way to have some, some, uh, financial support from it so that I can not do the other things. And so in that process, I've seen some practices that I really don't agree with that are going on in the world of spirituality. And I see that, um, that vulnerability to, being out of balance with it. And I'm constantly keeping myself in check with that. I will not teach anything that I don't feel aligned to. I will not share anything that I feel like is manipulative or misleading. Sometimes I change my mind about people that I've had on my show. You know, when I interview someone for the Alchemy of Ascension, I have a, a 15 minute intake, whatever I find about them online. Sometimes it's, you know, an hour or whatever, half an hour of their videos. Then I have a 15 minute intake conversation. That is my, my opportunity to get to know them in their work. It's not very much time. There have been people that I've had on that later I've been like, Oh, I don't really know that. I don't think I agree with what that person's teaching or doing. There have been people during the 15 minute interview that I've said, this is not right. This is not going to work. This doesn't, this isn't going to be an alignment with what I'm offering. And then there are people that I've had on that are like, oh my gosh, this person's amazing. I want to collaborate with them and they become friends and, and co-collaborators in um, new courses and things. So I just want you to know, um, not everyone that I interview is someone that I agree with. And I don't always have a lot of time to figure out whether they're authentic or not. And I can't always tell. Some people are very good at what they do and I can't always tell immediately. And sometimes I'll have someone on again to unpack more, to understand more of what they're about and still not be sure. And so, you know, I am, I'm really coming to these conclusions myself. I have decided in 2023 to pursue other areas and avenues of wealth generation for myself and my life in the realm of finance so that I am, I will, I, my goal by the end of 2023 is to be 100% not relying on any income that I get from coaching, mentorship, and spiritual courses that I'm not relying on that to live on or pay my bills. And that doesn't mean that I won't charge for my services. I think it's important to charge, not for everything. This is free. Lots of stuff that I do is free. My summits are free. Um, I don't think that everything should be free because when you pay, and this is something that I've, I've learned through my trainings, when you pay, you pay attention. When somebody pays, and, and you actually, it's, it's important to pay the value of what you're receiving. Because if you're just given things for free, you're not nearly as likely to take them like deeply pay attention and take them in and deeply receive what you're learning. If you're paying a lot of money for, for instance, for coaching or a high-end course, you're so much more likely to do the coursework, to get through the course, to take it to heart, to open and, and, and give the time that is needed to really receive that learning. I mean, spirituality courses are not done for you. You have to do the work yourself. So while I see the value in charging and I see the value in giving a lot away for free, my goal 
in by the end of 2023 is to be in a financial position where I do not rely on donations or mentorships or anything, any income from my spiritual teachings in order to get my, my life paid for and handled. That for me will give me this, um, this greater buffer, I guess you want to call it to, um, it's like a compass of clarity where if I never sold another course, if I never signed another client, I would not be struggling. And I think that there's value in that. And I'm not saying that um, that you should only be with a spiritual teacher who's operating that way. And I know there are a lot of wonderful spiritual teachers out there who would not be able to get their bills paid if they weren't selling their courses. And that's okay too. It's just to again, be discerning. And for me, I'm able to, I would do this work. I know I would do this work no matter what. I love teaching Embodied Ascension, my six-month course, because of the transformation that happens in my clients. If I never, if I, if, if money went away and I never made another penny on that course, I would still do it. I would still offer it. I would still bring people through it because it is my contribution to the people that take it. And when I see what happens in their lives and I see the expansions, the true inner expansions that they have through going through that coursework and completing it, I, I'm so grateful that I can offer that. And I love doing that. And I love providing that. So I would still do that. And I will still do that. It's just that I won't need to rely or depend on financial support from that to live my life. And so again, I am going to end this conversation by saying, be discerning. If somebody that you're listening to claims to be part of a spiritual hierarchy, I'm, you know, if there's this, this, this ego thing that is leading with, I'm part of this, whatever, therefore I have the information and you don't, or if, you know, if there's any element of that, if there's an imbalance in, in, and it's, they're coming from the head, not the heart, or they're making you feel less than, or they're making you feel special because you're part of their inner circle, any of those things to be discerning to check in with yourself, your heart knows, your internal compass knows. If you're following someone for the wrong reasons, you know it already, you can feel it. And that's why you've probably listened to this entire conversation that I'm sharing with you today, because some part of you is ready to make the change and shift internally to listen to your own inner truth, to trust yourself more, to trust your heart, to trust that you are loved and nourished and supported by the divine, that you just by being here are inherently worthy. And to know that about yourself, to trust and love yourself more. Thank you so much for listening, for joining me today. If this was valuable to you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification if you'd like to receive updates on when my new videos come out. I'm just so grateful that you are part of my world. I love you. I cherish you. Namaste.